Hello and welcome again to Cardiac Imaging Agora. In this session, we will discuss a rare form of atrial septal defects, and we review all other forms of ASD. So this is a, a case that we saw recently of a patient who has unroofing of the coronary sinus as a form of atrial septal defect. And we will go over that in the next few slides. First, let's start with some history. This is a 55-year-old uh, female patient uh, with shortness of breath for five to six years. She was seen in Vermont uh, and she had a nuclear stress test, which was uh, normal, or at least reported as normal. And then she was seen in Boston and they did a resting uh, echocardiogram, which was reported as normal. A year and a half to two years later, she presented to us after uh, her symptoms continued uh, shortness of breath mainly, and most of her symptoms when she was seen locally were attributed to perimenopausal symptoms. And we were actually supposed to deliver a third opinion for her. This is her uh, EKG on uh, presentation. Uh, again, this is a uh, lady in her mid-50s, uh, normal sinus rhythm. Uh, you can see some left axis uh, deviation here and uh, non-specific uh, STT changes, uh, but nothing uh, uh, remarkable otherwise. A chest X-ray was performed and reported a enlarged cardiac uh, silhouette with predominantly right heart enlargement on the chest X-ray, and she was referred for an echocardiogram. This is the first uh, view we're gonna uh, discuss today. Uh, what you can see here is you can see a significantly dilated right side of the heart, parasternal long axis view, with some evidence of uh, mitral valve prolapse, where you can see this uh, mitral valve mildly prolapsing by leaflet, probably more posterior than anterior, crossing that imaginary line at the mitral annulus. Uh, otherwise, the ejection fraction is normal and the aortic valve appears unremarkable. Uh, with that, uh, she has some uh, trivial mitral regurgitation. You can see that right here. And then we move to a modified uh, right-sided uh, view uh, where uh, the first thing you notice is that there's this coronary sinus emptying into the right atrium and it appears dilated. And also you can see here where the arrows are some flow uh, into that coronary sinus, some turbulence at least at the mouth of the coronary sinus as it empties into the uh, right atrium. Apical four chamber, uh, you can see a normal uh, left ventricular size and systolic function, uh, normal uh, left atrial size, but the right ventricle here you can see is as big if it's not slightly bigger than the left ventricle indicating right ventricular dilatation. Uh, probably the function is normal or slightly low and the right atrium is uh, dilated bigger than the left uh, atrium. This is a saline uh, injection, bubbles injection, mm -hmm. and you can see that there is uh, uh, a delayed or uh, uh, some shunting here happening between the uh, right side of the heart and the left side of the heart with bubbles uh, uh, crossing, uh, as you can see them uh, uh, coming through here, a significant number of uh, bubbles crossing, but at least it's very hard from this view to determine the place where uh, this shunting is occurring. Is it occurring in the atria? Is it occurring uh, uh, at the level of uh, veins? Or uh, it's unlikely to be at the level of the ventricle because we can see the right uh, at the left uh, atrium here uh, filling with bubbles uh, first. Then we move again to, uh, to look at this uh, uh, coronary sinus. You can see here, this is the tricuspid valve. Uh, then you can see the coronary sinus uh, right here, again, dilated with some flow uh, coming from the coronary sinus and emptying into, uh, into there some turbulence of flow, which is not something we see really, uh, uh, frequently, uh, given that uh, the flow in the coronary sinus is very, uh, has very, flow, uh, very low velocity. Uh, still view here, uh, looking again at this uh, uh, coronary sinus, and you can see this coronary sinus now uh, with its uh, connection to the left atrium, this is something that should not happen. So the coronary sinus should have should be sealed right here, uh, and you should see at least a, a line here indicating complete sealing, uh, physiologically or normally. But in this instance, you can see that coronary sinus at least uh, opening into the left atrium. Uh, again, 
uh, you can see here uh, this uh, this uh, coronary sinus uh, uh, dilatation uh, and uh, and opening. So uh, this is the coronary sinus here, quite dilated. Uh, uh, this on the left hand side, you can see the coronary sinus here into the left atrium, uh, unroofed, or uh, or there is a punch hole in the coronary sinus. Uh, leading to a connection to the left atrium because left atrial pressure is higher than right atrial pressure you can expect to see flow from the left atrium into the coronary sinus and uh, emptying into the right atrium and with modification of pressure conditions by valsalva or others uh, that uh, flow can shift and you can have flow from the right atrium uh, through the coronary sinus into the left atrium as we saw in the uh, uh, on the bubble study this is an mri done on this uh, on this uh, patient um, uh, to ascertain uh, where the shunting is happening uh, and to get better assessment of the right ventricle. Uh, you can see here uh, the right ventricle is slightly dilated. The next view here, you can see that uh, coronary sinus now clearly linking the left atrium uh, to the right atrium right here with the arrow, with the blue arrow. Um, again, uh, if I play this here, you can see, uh, you're going to start seeing that uh, connection displaying itself right in this uh, area right here. So I'm going to let it play for a little bit uh, so you can see that uh, for yourself. Again, this is a coronary sinus acting as a conduit between uh, the left atrium uh, and the right atrium. So the coronary sinus is normally supposed to drain the venous flow of the heart, so it should not have any connection to the uh, left side of the heart. Uh, and in this instance, uh, it's connecting the left side, the left atrium to the right atrium, acting as a form uh, of, uh, of uh, atrial septal uh, defect. So we calculated the QPQS uh, for this by echocardiography, it was two and by MRI it's 2.3. This is a very significant uh, uh, shunt. And this is basically a graphic of how you should be doing this or how it can be done uh, using uh, simple echocardiographic uh, measurements that we obtain all the time, which is the flow basically across the pulmonary artery here, the pulmonary valve, and the flow across the uh, uh, aortic valve. And the, uh, uh, the flow should be equal in normal conditions unless you have a, a shunt. Now, uh, to go back and review some forms of uh, atrial septal defects, uh, we start from the top with upper sinus uh, venosus defect uh, seen here, uh, right high up in the atria. Uh, then you can have a lower sinus uh, uh, venosus uh, defect, uh, seen very low here, uh, uh, close to the IVC, the insertion of the IVC into the uh, 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 right atrium. Uh, the third type, which is the most common type, is the secundum defect, which is basically the one in the middle, where uh, there is a failure of uh, maturation or meeting of the primum uh, ridge with the secundum uh, ridge from the bottom. Uh, the defect we just presented here is a defect in the coronary sinus, and this is a uh, the what we call unroofing of the coronary sinus or a punch hole in the coronary sinus. And finally, the more complex defect usually involving uh, the base or the uh, crux of the heart, uh, it's called the primum defect, and that usually involves uh, patients with endocardial cushion defects where you have an ASD, uh, a VSD, a, uh, a defect in the uh, mitral valve apparatus and the tricuspid valve apparatus and various forms of this can manifest themselves in the endocardial cushion defect where you have a cleft mitral valve and so on and so forth. So uh, the complexity here is higher as you go up uh, with the primal defect being the most, uh, the most complex one and most probably consequential hemodynamically. So the prevalence of atrial septal defects is uh, one in every 1500 uh, live birth. Uh, we start with uh, sinus venosus defects. Again, these are defects at the top when they are uh, high up or close to the uh, bottom of the left atrium or right atrium connection when you're talking about uh, sinus venosus connection to the uh, IVC, two, two to three percent. The secundum are the most common, six to ten percent of all congenital heart disease. Uh, the one I just showed you, the coronary sinus uh, defect or unroofing coronary sinus is very rare. Uh, uh, I have seen just in my uh, 20 plus year career, uh, probably about four or five, uh, uh, basically uh, extremely rare. Um, and finally, the primary ASDs, this is uh, 
uh, 30% of all ASDs, and this is the most complex one involving other structures, including the ventricular septum, the mitral valve, the tricuspid valve, and so on and so forth. Now, as far as type of coronary sinus ASDs, uh, again, once we see these, uh, it's, uh, there is a typing that has been done for these by uh, Kirkland and his group. Uh, type one is an uncompletely unroofed, uh, is completely unroofed coronary sinus uh, with left superior vena cava. Uh, type two is completely unroofed without uh, left superior vena cava or uh, 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 persistent left superior vena cava. Uh, type three is partially unroofed uh, mid portion. And finally, the partially unroofed uh, terminal portion. This is what we're seeing here in type four, what we saw in our patient. And the reason we say this is in the terminal portion, if you remember when you looked at the uh, parasternal long axis views of the heart uh, in this presentation, there was no dilatation of the coronary sinus, uh, at least in the proximal portion. This is where you see the coronary sinus dilated if you have a persistent left superior vena cava because it anchors itself proximally in the coronary sinus. Whereas in this instance, the, uh, the unroofing happened distally and therefore the coronary sinus is only dilated distally. As you can see in this uh, schematic view, you can have multiple holes uh, uh, in the coronary sinus as it uh, goes around the heart, again, connecting uh, the left atrium uh, here uh, to the right uh, atrium and acting as a form of atrial septal uh, defect. Uh, so this is type four uh, unroofing of the coronary sinus that I just shared with you uh, today. Given the large uh, amount of shunting and the symptoms that this patient was having, she was sent uh, for surgery uh, and she did uh, very well afterwards. Uh, again, uh, some of the lessons uh, from this uh, uh, case, uh, traditional views uh, sometimes need to be acquired with agitated saline uh, uh, to uncover uh, uh, the presence of these unusual defects. Some of the views we obtain usually do not open the coronary sinus fully uh, to be seen. And I reviewed the echo that was obtained uh, uh, outside our institution about a year and a half before her presentation here. And again, it's very hard to see if there was a, uh, uh, a defect uh, or a dilatation of coronary sinus because it wasn't seen. And the other uh, issue was the uh, acquisition of the agitated saline. Uh, they have only acquired three beats. And in these instances, you have to acquire uh, more than three beats to see, to allow this uh, uh, saline to uh, the bubbles to cross uh, with uh, marking on the echo when you're doing it, of, if you have perform maneuvers like Valsalva maneuvers or uh, other things. So you have to go for modified views uh, to show the points of uh, entry and exit. And you have to follow that jet all the way uh, to provide an explanation. Uh, thank you so much uh, for uh, listening to this and I hope you enjoyed it.